Hey, Steve Noble, Noble Moto. What we're going to do today is we are going to install some high cider uh, LED turn signal running lights on the front of my Lowrider ST. We're going to lose these ones. Yay! The big ugly stock ones. Pick these up from my local high cider rep, Chelsea Motorworks. And uh, yeah, I don't know. They look pretty cool. The picture, they look pretty cool. We'll see what happens. Um, this is a task that you can do yourself. All it's really going to take is you are going to have to take the fairing off and you're probably going to have to do a little wire soldering, which isn't too hard. I'll run through it as we go. And other than that, everything just bolts right up on here. So it's a pretty easy procedure. You can do this. I believe in you. So let's jump into it right now. These fasteners that hold your windshield on are a T27 Torx bit. You're going to want to remove each one of these. You're going to want to loosen the top four and then the two lower ones in front of or above the headlight. You'll want to completely remove those. Be careful. There's rubber washers and rubber spacers on the back of them. Don't drop anything. You can just loosen the top four but you're going to want to remove the lower two, the two there above the headlight. You're going to want to completely remove those. Once those are off, you should be able to grab the windshield and lift it up. It will pop off the upper rubber mounts that were holding it in place, and then you're free to do as you wish with the windshield. When removing all the fairing bolts, you want to be careful to go around, break all of them free. You don't want to have just one bolt holding the entire fairing on there. So break all of them free and back them quite a ways out. Then once that's done, you can go around and start removing them. Just leave maybe the top two in there uh, by a few threads. Once you get all the screws out, remove those top two, but remember to support the fairing as you do it because that's the only thing that's holding the fairing on, and the fairing is also holding the headlight in place too. So there's a little bit of extra weight there to manage. Now you're gonna to wanna to remove these three bolts. One, two, three. Then there's three more on the other side. From there, you should be able to pull the fairing forward. In the once you pull the fairing forward, you should be able to look down at the top of the headlight on the inside of the fairing, and you'll see a quick connect electrical plug in there. You're going to want to remove that electrical plug. From there, you can remove the fairing right off the bike. Now to unplug the turn signal, you have this whole little tab thing here. You'll notice there's actually a little zip tie here. All these handy dandy little zip tie cutters. You want to get up in here and make sure you don't cut your wires. That will pop it off the side. Uh, and then I thought you could loop a zip tie through this, and I realized that is actually not how this thing works. So therefore, we're just going to pop that thing off of there. And I guess we'll have to buy another one. So these pull out of there. There you can see it. Um, yeah, I guess we'll just have to get another one. Uh, maybe we can find one that actually has a just a little slot on it for zip ties. Whatever. Anyways, from here, we can unplug our turn signal connectors. These are often a little bit of a mystery. So right here where my right thumb is, I press this little tab in and pulled it apart, and boom, off goes the turn signal connector. Take your T40 Torx bit, break that sucker free. And from there, you remove your turn signal right off of there. 
Now we can slide our wires through there. When installing these high side return signals, uh, which we're going to want to do is you can put it through the mount and then it's a, it has a lock washer and a nut that is supplied with it that takes a half inch wrench. You can put that up on there, uh, put it through the mount, put the lock washer on, you know, feed the wires through it, then put the nut on it and uh, torque it down pretty well. I don't want to torque spec to this, but get it to where they feel pretty tight and that they're not going to vibrate loose, but also don't kill it. It's just a turn signal. That sucker good and tight. Now from there, we can pull our wiring around the back side and up through what will be this little notch here. And we can make our electrical connections. Obviously, we're going to have to cut and splice into the stock harness. First thing you're, so we need to know which wires do which. So we're going to set our meter to volts, that is DC voltage. You see right up here, boop, right up there, hopefully you can see that. It's in millivolts. Um, some have a button that you can switch the range on. This one doesn't, it's automatic. But either way. Down here I have uh, jumper wires hooked up to the meter leads. You don't necessarily need to do this. I basically did this, that way I can show you what's going on with the meter and keep my hands out of the way so you can see the meter and see which wires I'm hooking this to. So I'm hooking the black lead, which is green in this case, to the black wire. You can hook your meter leads up backwards, it doesn't matter, it'll just read a negative voltage. So we're going to hook it up right there, we're going to figure out which one is the running light. So now we're going to turn the bike on. That one's 0.7 volts. So our blue with the red stripe is not on. So we'll hook the 12 volt positive to it there. Oh, and our straight blue uh, shows 12 volts positive. See that in the range, V for voltage, 12.1, which means if I switch this back here and I hit my right turn signal, uh, you should see the meter cycling, and that's my turn signal is basically blinking right now. So with that, we're going to turn it back off. Turn the turn signal back off, that is. Now, I have a wiring diagram with these LED turn signals, but let's say I don't. Let's turn the bike off. There, bike's off. So let's say I don't. What I can do from there is I can actually take our black wire, which is off in our negative, and we're going to hook it up to the same negative here, and we're going to use the alligator clip as a connector. Maybe. We're going to try to. There we go. Now, now we're going to hook our white wire up to what I'm pretty sure is our running lights. Or no, Hook our yellow wire up, because I'm pretty sure that's our turn signal. Yes. Make sure our white wire is up and out of the way. Turn our bike back on. Nothing's happening. And as you can probably see reflecting there, our turn signal's blinking, our meter's showing it's blinking. So again, our blue with the stripe goes to the yellow, um, which means our turn signal off, which means our white and our blue are the running light. Boom, running light. So with that in mind, we're going to make a little note of that. Then we're going to move to soldering the wires. So we want to solder all this together. I have a soldering iron that's down here and heating up. I already cleaned the tip off of this really well. To make sure it's extra clean, I'm going to take flux, if I can get it open, Ew. I'm going to take a little bit of flux here and dip the end of the soldering iron in it. This will help clean the soldering iron. There we go. 
Now we're going to set this aside and let it heat back up. Now I already have the wires stripped and I only have like about a quarter inch, maybe five sixteenths stripped off of here. That's all you really need. I already put some shrink tubing up on the wire and slid it away, which is good because I often forget that step. And now I'm going to take my wires and we're just going to do one at a time here. We're going to stretch them out. Now you can try and mesh them together or some people like to twist them around. Whatever works best for you. And a lot of times these are tiny little wires so it's kind of hard to do this too. They make little alligator clip stands. I should buy one of them. The little alligator clip stands help you know hold everything in place while you're soldering it. Sounds handy, right? Yeah, it probably is. Any day now here. We just got to get it all sit in place. Ta-da! Hopefully you can see right there, it's set in place. Now you're going to want to put a little bit of flux on it. This is the step everybody skips and they go, I don't need flux. Yeah, you do. Copper gets flash corrosion on it and uh, so if you don't clean it off with flux, the solder won't stick to it. So if your solder always beads up and drips off, it's because you're not using flux. So, we're gonna take our hot soldering iron. And we're gonna put it on the bottom side here that we can push up next to it. And once it drips off of there, we're gonna put our solder on from the other side. And we're gonna let her flow and just feed it in there. If you use too much, it doesn't matter, it just drips off. Solder doesn't cost that much if you're not doing it for a living. Move your smoldering soldering iron out of the way. And as you can see, all the solder flowed right in there and flowed right around the wire. Now the test for whether or not you do a good solder is to take it, once it cools, and give it a pull. If it doesn't come off, you did a good job. However, I heated the wire up enough that I melded the shrink tubing. So I could either A, unsolder it, or B, wrap it in electrical tape. We're going with B on this joint. So, we'll wrap this sucker up really good. Or we're gonna try to anyways. Cool. Now that that one's taped up on there, before we do our next joint, we're gonna make sure our uh, shrink tubing is far enough back that that doesn't happen again. Basically repeat the process on each wire. A little dab of solder, or flux I mean, sorry. If you get any little pointy edges there, you should take a pair of needle nose, just squeeze them on down. That way they don't poke through your insulation. And again, I melded the shrink tube. Now we're gonna check our wiring. Got a nice running light right there, right turn signal. Boom. It's a nice bright setup. Let's move it around the front there. All right, rain lights. There's the difference. Uh, obviously, you're going to be able to see the right side of the bike or the new rain light much better uh, if you're oncoming traffic. And from here, we'll go with right turn. Left turn. And for comparison, hazards. There you have it. These high siders are pretty cool. Now you're ready to reinstall your fairing. The smart thing to do would have been to clean this fairing while you had it off. But I didn't do that. So, hopefully you can see this. First thing you're going to want to do when you reinstall the fairing, probably help to have someone hold this in place for you, 
But I don't have that. So we're going to take our plug here and we're going to plug it back into the spot on the top of the headlight. Which you may not be able to see, but hopefully you saw it in the disassembly process. Right down in there. Now that your headlight is plugged in, you're going to want to start putting your fairing in place. Make sure all your wires are up where they should be and simply pop it back into location. You might have to move it around some turn signal mounts and stuff. There's no real great secret to this. Just slide it up to where it looks like it's in place. Now take two screws and start them in there. Do not put them in all the way. All right, now that those two screws are in, you're gonna to wanna to do a walk around on it. Make sure everything's lined up. Make sure no wires are sticking out or in any weird pinch points. Look inside each screw hole and make sure uh, you can see the little uh, nut thing, whatever you want to call it, the little clip nut that attaches to the fairing. I'll tell you if they're all lined up or not. There we go. Now, don't tighten anything up yet. What you want to do is go around and start in every single screw. And not by one or two threads. Make sure it's in there by more than a couple threads. That way you know it's fully lined up. Give it a good spin. But don't tighten them down. Because you want to make sure every single screw starts in there before you tighten anything down. And of course, don't forget to put these little wing deflectors on here. They might look silly, but I bet they do something. What that something is, I don't know. If you forget to put them on, you'll probably find out. Next, reinstall the screws that hold the upper fairing in place, or the windshield and the top, or top part of the fairing. You know what I mean. But don't tighten these down. You want to leave these a little loose also. Especially until you get the windshield on there. You may notice these are chrome bolts. Uh, that's because I bought them from Lowbrow Customs. They sell some chrome hardware, and I think it looks cool. Now you're ready to reinstall your windshield. Your windshield should drop into place on these outer grommets here. Put the, this side on first. Go around the other side, slide that one down in place. You'll feel it kind of snap in there. Give it a good look over, make sure it's all nice and straight and square. And from there, you can reinstall these two screws. Then after that, we can go around, snug everything up, and then torque them all to spec. You're gonna to wanna to torque these screws to 30 inch pounds.